Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I welcome all of you to, to this course that is an introduction to ancient Indian technology. And most of you are aware that uh, this country is having a very uh, wider legacy of scientific heritage and uh, where we have developed, we had developed technology. Unfortunately, it is not being taught in the class nowadays. And I was also not aware about this thing and uh, five years back I uh, came to know that we were having a large number of technologies and we, our ancestors had developed uh, quite a bit of science which will be helpful. In this course, uh, you will be learning about like uh, what are the a philosophy of doing this, uh, this science and technology. And uh, before that, like uh, if you look at like uh, you might be wondering why <coughs> this, uh, we need to study this thing, why we need to study the ancient Indian technology at this moment. And before that, we need to ask certain questions like what do you mean by science? How it is useful? Can any of you tell me what do you mean by science? Because science is being taught from the class 1 onwards. What do you mean by that? Science is the study of any object or anything uh, uh, systematically uh, and uh, in a well organized manner. Well organized. Any other answer? Science is something which defines how to live actually, uh, how it is defined, how the way of living. Way of living can you call it as a science because it is basically you want to know the governing laws, what you know, how the nature works, physical laws and those things also have to be verifiable, right. That means as uh, the other person told that it is a systematic study and also it can be proved that it is right one, it is also subjected to scrutiny. So, therefore, we can say that science is a systematic knowledge about particular field of study or any field and it builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanation, there should be some logic, there should be why it is so how it is so, right. And it must have uh, some predictive tools. Suppose you know certain laws or you know rules, then can you predict what is going to happen about the nature, about the universe. So, that we call it generally science. So, science is basically as old as human civilization because man is basically a curious and creative creature by nature. So, therefore, it is his desire to know why it is happening, how it is happening, what can be done like that quest for the knowledge which is inherent in the uh, human life or inherent with the human beings are a basis of developing a science. So, science is as I told is as old as civilization and so also the technology. But question arises, what do you mean by the technology? Because all of us we are a part and parcel of technology. Technology is also is as old as civilization because earlier days what uh, being told to us that people were living in jungles and slowly and steadily they moved out of the jungles and settled down and developed the technology of uh, harnessing the various what you call food and then shelter and then other things to have a life. So, can you tell me what do you mean by technology? 
technology is something that can support science for example if we we have earlier times we have parabolic mirrors to light uh. up a light up something uh. Uh, even a dry leaf we use a parabolic uh, mirror to concentrate the solar uh, you know uh, light or the something energy and then you ignite it that is the point you are yeah, making right, right? okay yes. so something which can support science is been defined by technology that means you can say that application of science by which you can develop a certain product or a process by which you can live a, a very what you call uh, good life right so therefore we can say that technology is basically the practical application of science to design a product or a process with the help of innovative tools as i told earlier that man is a curious and creative creature that means innovation is a part of human life and it also the systems and when you talk about a product or kind of things you need to use materials so therefore you'll have to use tools systems and material that improve the quality of human life because always the man is quest for the knowledge and try to use it to their advantages to have a better life that doesn't mean that we will be leading a life only with the embroiled with the materialism right we need to handle the material but material need not to be taking away the essence of life from us that is what is happening nowadays so therefore basically technology as i told is as old as civilization then question is what is the you know uh, difference between engineering and technology can anybody tell me what do you mean by engineering what are the differences between engineering and technology uh, maybe sir uh, maybe where welfare of society is involved no but then what is that see is it engineering is same as that of the technology when technology is used in welfare of mankind or society there no that is always will be there any 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 knowledge as a matter of fact is not only the science not only the technology but also the philosophy also the sociology psychology any other form of knowledge is for the welfare of the human beings and also the environment where they live that should be the motto but unfortunately we don't look at it that perspective but that is the motto what our ancestor already uh, always emphasize on that so engineering is basically a process of what you call doing if you look at the engineering refers to the processes of doing for example like i know how to write and our ancestors were knowing also i mean very earlier vedic time or some other time you know like later on that they were knowing how to write for example they can take a palm leaves and take a needle and go on writing scribing it but after that the pain came then i uh, even when i was a kid we used to use ink and dip the nib of the pen and then write a later on fountain pen came then the what do you call ball point pen came gel pen came like, so these are all technology but the process the engineering is that to have a pen right or the process of writing so therefore is a thing but let us this is the way what we define let us see that what do you mean by silpa we always talk about silpa silpa generally means in is a sanskrit word but what do we call is maybe some people translate into industry right when you talk about industry like silpa uh, kind of things then we call it basically it will be involving uh, technology it will be involving engineering right and it is also definitely when you talk about engineering technology science always will be there so let us see what our uh, you know scripture says about that nana vidhanam vastunam yantranam kalpa sampadam dhatunam sadhanancha vastunam silpa sangeetam the meaning is that nana vidhanam is various kinds of techniques machines like uh, and also the bastunam yantranam means machines and bastunam means basically uh, materials it can be uh, basically uh, products of course you can make product from the materials and the process 
And of course, when you talk about material, you need to know how to extractions kind of things. And sadhanangstya means transportation, you need to move from one place to another and also the motion of the components one in a machine you one can think of. And bastunang means habitats, you know, like bastu sastra we talk about that is basically how to make a building or a, a heart or a room or a palace or a fort. So, that is together we call it basically silpa. That means it is the combination of engineering and technology that we call it as a silpa. Now, when you talk about uh, this science and technology question now arises that why you will be talking about India and earlier days we call it as a Bharat, Bharat meaning basically which is always aspired to a better knowledge that is the meaning of Bharat you can see. And we need to know what is the strength of this although lot of uh, young people think that India is a very poor country and it is not doing well and we are having lot of problems, uh, we do not have any strength, but no India is having a lot of strength we need to relook at it. Therefore, we are looking at Indian ancient technology in this course. And this is a very introductory course what we will dealing with because there is a lot of things are there which cannot be covered in 30 lectures. Therefore, I will be giving you a, a very bird's eye view of the technology which were being developed by our ancestors which were having the proofs for that. So, if you look at <coughs> this uh, I have shown here the map of uh, India in earlier days Bharat, nowadays in English we are calling it as India. So, if you look at this is the current map what we are having here of course, this portion is Pakistan right and earlier it was a part of our country India before 1947 and there is also the portion of the Bangladesh right kind of regions here uh, and then uh, before that we is a part of the Afghanistan which was there in ancient time uh, as a part of our country. And uh, besides this uh, like Bhutan and other places were there uh, and uh, Tibet uh, those are the countries not with the India, but earlier it was a part of India. And if you look at that you need to look at this map which is very important uh, because of there are several geographical things are there and in this region it is basically Bay of Bengal we are having a very good coastal uh, line and here in this place we are having Arabian seas this region right. And we are having Kutch like Gujarat kind of things and there is a desert area here which is a dry region and we are having Himalaya. Himalaya is a very important place because we are having a ice cap there in the Himalaya and which makes the our country to be cool and maintain the temperature of this region. Trans Himalayas, Western Himalayas, if you look at we are having Gangetic Plains, it is a uh, very great uh, fertile land we are having which produces uh, uh, you know a lot of food grains. And we are having semi arid region here in this region, and this is the central highlands where we are having a uh, lot of Bindhachals are there, and then we are having also the as I told eastern ghat which is having mountain range that protects you know our country from the monsoon wind, and uh, so also the western region it is instrumental for having good rains in this place. And uh, we are having Deccan Plateau regions and North East regions where we get a lot of this thing and Himalayan region. If you look at it is a very great country having a geographically rich in that. And uh, if you look at this is uh, we are uh, fortunate enough to have uh, this country and we have taken bath here because this country is having. 52 percent of cultivable land we, uh, as compared to world average which is 11 percent. That means, you know food is very important because as our scripture says Anne Patishta Deva, so food is really very uh, you know 
important for our life and we can get very easily in this place because of uh, our country where cultivable land is quite a large bit. And beside this, for the food, we need to have hour of sun science. The time period of the sun science in a day in this country is quite high as compared to the world average. If you go to any other country, you know, like it will be less. Of course, Pakistan, Bangladesh, these are the our own part and then so also Afghanistan. And we are having all 15 major climatic regions, whatever the, in the whole world is there in this place. That is the, you know, earth what we are having in this country. And uh, as uh, I told that this is having a lot of climatic regions and very fertile land and lot of rains, water and other things. Therefore, 10 biodiversity regions are available here. Therefore, lot of people even today are coming from outside country and living in jungles to look at our seeds, look at our biodiversity uh, wealth and then do research and take those components and they can recycle back to us with a, you know, tax, uh, with a more money, you know, like we will have to pay for that. That means these are the, our resources. We are not aware, we should aware, we should do, we should take care of that. And besides this, India has the largest livestock populations. That means, you know, like cows, goats, the domestic animals. We do, it is from the time immemorial. We always a part of, you know, the animals which are helpful to us and also the other animals. We always believe that man is not only to live on this earth, man is one of them and also live together. That is the ethos with which our ancestor had lived and that is there in our psychic even today. So, beside this, there are several rivers, large rivers like your Ganga and some portion of Brahmaputra also and Mahanadi, Kaveri, Jamuna, there are several rivers, I mean, are there which are endowed with that and we are very fortunate to have those rivers because they supply waters and then all those things. And beside this, mineral reservoirs are quite high, like we are having coal uh, storage and which can uh, continue even if we use at this rate maybe another 250, 300 years of, uh, you know, coal we can use that. And uh, we are having bauxite which is having large reservoir that is which we produce aluminum, so also iron, uh, zinc and copper and several other minerals, we are endowed with them. So, these are the our wealth we should utilize. Not only that, India is having 25 official languages and which is having uh, 1652 spoken languages, which are being developed and most of the languages are scientific in nature and it develops it, you know, it help it, uh, those are if are you, learn properly, it can help you to develop a good mind. Unfortunately, it is not being, uh, you know, taken seriously uh, and learning properly this language and which must be, uh, what you call, retain much, must be protected from the onslaught of English, which is a dominating on the other language today. And beside this, we are having the very large populations and people are here invariably intelligent and energetic in nature. And that is why they are also corrupted according to my interpretation, right. So, therefore, and they are uh, not doing well for the development of our nation because they are not being educated properly. And education should be done properly such that they can channelize their intelligence and the energy for the welfare of the country and also they can grow. So, it is because of bad education, because of what you call uh, unsupportive government and social systems by which they are being affected, they are not contributing. But I am sure if they are educated properly and under the better leadership, and social environment will improve and we can have a very good nice place to live that is in this country. 
So, it is having a very good uh, what you call can, uh, uh, capabilities and it must be harnessed properly and directed properly, so that we can really do. So, therefore, it is important to look at our heritage and culture. And uh, let us look at what is the difference between basically I want to give like ancient and present India is the geographically. If you look at India is having something uh, 29 sorry 29 states and 7 union territories. Unfortunately, some of the states are being bifurcated in the process of bifurcation. So, it may be more states to come and uh, this is the map which I have shown. I mean I need not to go through all the states and uh, but earlier days as I told earlier that it is I have taken the Mauryan dynasty and which was something 265 BC it is having territory not only the India larger portion except this southern portion and then uh, eastern northeastern portion like uh, it was having also the Pakistan and some portion of Afghanistan here somewhere right. So, it is having a very large territory and if you look at the uh, chronologic of major periods and dynasty, uh, let us go through it because it may be helpful for us to um, get into the technology, how it is developed and where it was developed kind of things. And if you look at 25,000 years and uh, you know before that is known as prehistoric period and uh, of course, 3000 to 1500 BC we call Indus Valley Civilization and nowadays we are calling it Indus Saraswati Valley Civilization because Saraswati river was there I will be showing you a picture. And the major areas if you look at it comes under that basically seen Punjab, Gujarat and Haryana kind of thing. And although I have taken this 3000 to 1500 BC the period, but generally we believe it is 5000 BC right in our mind it is there. And recently IIT Kharagpur, uh, they have done research, they have published uh, this work in the nature which is a very prestigious journal in 25th May 2016 and they have excavated the data uh, you know uh, the Birana region in Haryana and they are claiming that Indus Valley civilization not 3000 years back BC, it is basically 8000 years kind of things back right. So, it is uh, what you call older than the Mesopotamia and that is the claim I wish that it should be right one and th that is the thing what is there in our mind and it is there in our scripture also it is trying to prove. So, therefore, it is very important that we should do the research and carry it out and the objective the motivation for me to take this course is to encourage you people to do the research on the Indology and the ancient technology and other things, so that we can find out the truth what it is. And then 1500 to 500 BC that is the uh, proto historic Vedic period what people are saying I have taken the data that which is being accepted worldwide and that is the region is Punjab, Gangetic plain and Kashmir region where the Vedic period, but however, uh, our scripture says that Ved is around something 5000 years old minimum that is the thing is quite old. So, therefore, more research is uh, you know required to find out the exact date where we are having the Vedic period. Of course, uh, that is the being accepted by the worldwide what I have quoted here and 560 to 330 is a historic period where the lot of uh, people took bath and they, they have contributed. I have just uh, mentioned that uh, about Gautam Buddha, Bimbisara, Ajasatu, these are the king. You might be aware of Gautam Buddha who was a profound of the Buddhism and which has cross, which has spread, uh, which was spread over the entire you know larger portion of Asia and other regions also. Ajasatu and Maha Padmananda of Magadha and during that time there was the invasion of Alexander which was being uh, this invasion was being nullified and uh, by at that time the king Porus and he was forced to go and have a truce with the, uh, the Porus the king in the frontier regions of India. And uh, during that time there was a stalwart who came up 
whose name is Chanakya, the, his name also other name is Vishnu Gupta. He was instrumental of installing the Chandra Gupta as the king of Magadha and which had done a wonderful work. He has written a also Arthasastra, which is something 332 uh, BC to 232 onwards. Of course, after that Bindusara and Asoka came. And there is a Sunga dynasty 192-71 BC. During that Saka invasion was there, but it was repulsed. And 322-647, there is the Gupta dynasty, which is the golden era uh, of our history, what people talk about. There are several kings came up and they did a wonderful work like Chandragupta I, Samudragupta, Chandragupta II, Kumargupta. And during that time, there was a Hoon which invaded our country and also uh, that was being repulsed back and uh, of course, there are other kings as Skandagupta. Later on, of course, uh, 1712 to 1192 in northern India, several dynasties, there is no single dynasty as such. Yashavan, Burman, uh, Pratiharas of Kannakubs, Palas and Senas of Bengal and Chalukya of Gujarat, Keshari of Kalinga and other things. And 300 to 1565 AD in the southern uh, Indian dynasty, there are several kings, uh, the dynasty came up like Pallavas, Kanchis. Uh, of Rashtrakutas like in uh, western and central Deccan region 850 to 1276 Cholas and 1197 to 1323 AD is Kakatas of Warangal we will be discussing something about their uh, you know technologies and Ganga dynasty we will be talking about certain technology of their 1300 to 1500 and Gajapati dynasty in, uh, in Odisha and Vijayanagar empire was a very important in the southern side that is 1336 to 1565. So, uh, uh, I will stop over here. Let us now look at what we have learnt that we have looked at what is the science, what is the meaning of technology, what how it was defined in uh, basically technology and the engineering in our ancient time and what is the importance like uh, of this country, what are the wealth we are having, what are the positive things we are having. And then you look at like chronologically how it is the various periods and dynasty in our history. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about basically how to, uh, uh, why we need to look at ancient science and technology. Thank you very much.